How y'all? Welcome back to the Den of Tools. I'm Blue, Red's older brother, and he always drags me down in there when we want to talk about getting away from the winter chill in our shops for some reason. And apparently he thinks polar bears are good at that sort of thing. I don't know what he's talking about. But, you know, that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about how to keep your shop hot, warm, toasty, and cozy without, you know, making you take the old... Uh, the long sleep from that carbon monoxide poisoning. So let's jump into it. Just to set the stage right now, current wind chills across the U.S. It's looking a bit frosty out there. And <laughs> except for you down in Florida, way down south, you're doing all right. But the rest of us, I mean, up here in Montana, way we're looking at, yeah, we're down right over right here in Livingston. They're saying two inches here, but I've heard as much as eight. Of course. Uh, old Yellowstone there, uh, West Yellowstone, they're going to get socked like they always do. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about kind of heaters there are out there you can put in your shop. Well, let's let's establish the basic kind of heaters you're going to talk about. And that is, first off, oil-filled radiant radiator heaters, all right? These are by far the most efficient heater out there. They're the simplest heater out there. They're not that expensive. Well, they're also not that cheap. Here's the problem with them. They're They're slow. They're slow to heat up, they're slow to cool down, they're heavy, they tip over kind of easy, and, and uh, you know, and you bump into them and they're, they'll give you a start. They're not going to, you know, burn the fur right off you, but it's not anything comfortable either. Then we go to the opposite of the spectrum, which is the forced air kind of things. These are basically hot coils with a fan blowing air through them. They're heating up the air. Good thing about them is they are cheap. They're easy, they're simple. And, and they just work, and they put out a decent amount of heat for their size. Problem is that they smell, they, uh, or some of them do, they, they, um, they're, they're not the most reliable things out there. I mean, as I said, they're cheap. Then we've got these, uh, the, these radiant style ceramic heaters. They're kind of a combination. Here's the funny thing is they have this category of forced air, you know, fan based, but all these other ones pretty much usually have fans as well. So you got a ceramic heating element rather than the wires. Then we got the uh, the radiant, uh, the, the quartz heaters. It's an infrared style. There's really two styles of these. There's a style where they, they heat up and they blow a fan over it. Then they just have the direct infrared style. Um, the, the benefit of these is they're one of the most efficient. The, the forced air fan ones, they're not efficient at all. They suck up a lot of juice. Ceramic's a little better. Other than oil, the uh, the infrared's going to be the best. And then we jump completely to a different power source. We're going from electric over to gas. Gas, no cords, portable, take it where you want to go. But you got to be safe, all right? Don't be that headline. Every year, we got to talk about it because every year I have to read one of these headlines. Because somebody didn't know. They did something stupid. They didn't know any better. They, they thought they were good to go. And then you end up with something like this. And I don't want to see anybody get hurt. None of you all. So don't if it's something like this, unless it says, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, still no. That's a kerosene one. That's a big no. Unless it says indoor safe. It ain't indoor safe. It's that simple. All right. Now, the number one one that jumps up, everyone says, you know, when you talk about indoor safe propane heaters is Mr. Heaters. Portable Buddy. This is their 9000 BTU propane heater. This thing's great. It goes anywhere you want. Takes uh, one of those little green canister kind of things that California hates so much. And uh, you just you turn it on and you got heat. Now, I will say downside of this is that, uh, well, you, you got to have more canisters with you in case you, you need more heat. The other thing is the byproduct of this is water. So it puts a lot of moisture into the air. And if you're in a small environment, you got some tools and stuff, you got to watch out for rust and stuff like that. Just be aware that we're over here on Walmart, though. Usually these things are pretty pricey. I was going to say that was the other downside. But $74, you can't complain about that. That's a hell of a sale over there. 74 bucks on that. Although right now you'll see it on sale for that pretty much everywhere. But, you know, we're talking about Walmart here. Easy to get. They can ship. You can pick up. You know, and that's that's usually the case with this kind of thing is you want to get it. You want to get it soon because you got cold weather inbound or you're already freezing your little toes off in the shop and it's time to warm them up. Now, let's say you're on more of a budget. You want, you want to save a few more bucks. You can go with the Dynaglo here for $69. Essentially the same kind of concept. Here's the deal with this one. 18,000 BTU. And this is taking two canisters of the green stuff there. So there you go, $69. You can get it in red if you want to jump up the price to $119. I say stick with the green and put the leave the other green back in your wallet, if you know what I'm saying. 
All right, let's jump over to Amazon and talk about radiator style heaters. Okay, now this is what I'm going to see here, like the higher end, the nice one, Drio. Full disclosure, they've, they've sent some stuff to Red in the past. I think they're still using it. We'll talk about that more in a bit. Anyway, the Drio Radiant Heater here, 1,500 watts. Here's the, here's the deal when it comes to electric heaters. Basically, 1,500 watts is the max you're going to get out of a 110 outlet. Anything more, you're going to have to go for 220 and get somebody to wire it in the whole nine yards. Uh, we're not going to cover that here. We're talking about plug and play, ready to go for every shop kind of stuff. Everyone can run one of these in their shop. Usually you'll have two heating levels or sometimes a variant, you know, digital increase, but like 750 to 1500 or digital increases in between. So what we got here is you've got your radiator style heater. It's nice. It's classy looking. It's got a remote control ain't that fancy. You got 102 bucks on that, down from 120. Drio makes some decent stuff. They really do. They say this will hit, heat up a 300 foot, you know, square foot kind of room. I'd say that's about right, but it ain't going to do it quick because that's the issue with with oil heaters. Here's a good thing though. They do carry on that heating once they get up to heat. They carry it really well. All right. They don't dry out the air as much as like a forced air heater. But remember, when you turn them off. You do want to make sure that they're someplace safe because you turn that off, you walk out the door, that thing's, that sucker is still hot and it's going to be hot for a while. So make sure it's not going to get bumped over by a cat or just, you know, fall over on its own somehow. Got to be safe with these things. Anyway, Drio makes a good heater. This is a solid one. It's got great reviews on it, 2,200 reviews and some for $102. Not a bad choice. Let's see what else we got. More budget friendly. We're going to talk about Polonis. Now, they make, a, they make some higher-end stuff as well, but this is their budget one. This is just your dead simple, I want heat, and I want it steady and long-term, and I don't pay a lot for it, and just want it to work. That's this heater right here in a nutshell here. $64. It's, it's hard to complain about that. It'll just work. It's going to heat up about the same size room. That's the thing with these. They're the Between the, the cheaper ones and the less expensive ones, you're not going to get more heat. You might get more features. You might get a better design. But you're not going to get more heat out of them by spending more money. Now, let's talk about forced air, okay? So we're going to kind of combine the forced air and the ceramic, and the and then we'll talk about the infrared ones also. So on the low end, as far as a, a known brand, something you can buy that's probably going to work is Black & Decker. I say probably because, well, it, it's Black & Decker. Anyway, $25 on this, down from 30 This is your dead simple little tiny little space heater you might put under your desk, you might put on your bench. You can carry it with you from room to room. There's nothing fancy about it. They all have little safety features. Then those are required by the government. If they get knocked over, they should all turn off. If they don't, I want to contact somebody about that because that's a problem. Anyway, 25 bucks. That's your, your low end of the spectrum when it comes to getting some just basic heat. And they'll heat up a room decently quick. It really will. 1,500 watts. It's the same heat as basically all these other ones other than the propane heaters. All right. Now, if you want something a little more fancy schmancy, we, we're going to talk about the Drio again. Now, Drio, this is the one that they sent. And I, I know Red and his family, they use that in the Cubs, the bunkhouse in the RV they have down there around Vegas. Now, a lot of you are like, well, what kind of heater do you need in Vegas? Well, well you know what? It, it gets chilly at night in Vegas. <laughs> right now, this is the coming week. Let's see here. Oh, look, it's, it's 63 during the day, 42 at night. Next, on Thursday the 15th, that's 31 degrees at night, all right? Yeah, it doesn't get that super hard cold like we get up here in Montana, but 31 degrees is not is not friendly kind of cold when you're sleeping at night. You got to make sure you got the covers up and everything else. So a heater like that comes comes in handy and it does. It keeps the Cubs room nice nice and warm. In fact, they often have to turn it down and stuff. But it's got a thermostat, it's got the oscillating features, it's got a remote that they promptly lost. <laughs> anyway, it's on sale from 50 bucks down to 42.49. It's a good solid little heater all right and you're talking about jumping up uh from 12 you're talking about almost double the price but you know the the remote and the oscillating features it, the oscillating really helps I, I really do have to say this now i'm going to add this next one in because people are always saying <laughs> why didn't you include one of the old milk house heaters i got one of those in my shop it's been running for 60 years well i'm gonna tell you why and i'm putting this in here and you can see it's on clearance at blaine's farm and fleet 
for 20 bucks. This is the comfort zone. It's the highest rated milk house heater that you can buy in the US and it sucks, all right? The build quality, these are not your grandpappy's heaters, all right? This used to be back in the day. I grew up with them too. Every, you know, I'd go in the old man's shop or grandpa's shop and stuff and look at stuff. There was always one of these in a corner chugging away, putting out heat. We all seen them. We all know about them, but they're, they're not that anymore. They're not that kind of build quality. They're junk. I, there's plenty of pictures online. You go on the Amazon site, you look at it, you got people showing pictures of shorted cords and sockets and melted elements. They, you can't, I can't recommend them. In fact, I'm not going to put a link to this because I can't recommend any milk house heaters out there. They're just not what they used to be. I'm sorry. All right, let's move along. Now, we talked about the, the, the smaller heaters. This is basically the same thing. It's not any more powerful. You think it would be being a tower heater, but it's not. But this is what Red and the family use in like the living area of the RV. Why? Because it's it's not, it's this tall vertical uh, fan kind of, and it, it oscillates the heat back and forth nicely, and it doesn't take up a huge footprint. So that's the nice thing about these tower ones is they get the heat up there, they blow out a larger area, and but they but they don't really take up any more of a footprint. So if you got vertical space, this is a great way to get more of that air flowing. Sixty five dollars on that, but get this: there's a ten percent off coupon. So is that is it going to take another six fifty off of that? As a five uh, sub sixty, let's just call it that. It's going to be sub sixty dollars. Lasco. Now here's one of the things that I, I I see a lot on this. Lasco on all the boxes says it's an American company, and I appreciate that. But all I, but from everything I've looked at, none of the stuff is made in America. But you know, at least the dollars are eventually ending up in America. Depends on how you look at. It. I looked at for American heating kind of products, and and what little there is, they're way expensive. Not usually made for like the kind of budget minded kind of stuff that we're talking about. All right, if you know of one that could fit in this category that I missed, put it down in the link. If you and if it's a good one, I'll I'll pin it. All right, now let's talk about if you want to get something a little fancier. You're going to go with the Optimus here. I don't know if it turns into a semi or not, but what I can tell you is it's even slimmer. It's even sleeker. It's got the little digital readout. Do the other one have digital? It's probably had digital readout on it. Maybe it's, I think it's up on top. Yeah, there, uh, there's a readout. I guess it's not digital, but it, it's got the readout up on top. This one's got a digital readout, so you can see exactly what it's set to. It's got the remote control that you got to be careful about not losing. It's $110 on that, though. The real benefit of something like this is it's slim. That, that's that's all you're getting out of that, and it, it looks stylish for in your in your, uh, your your house there in your kitchen. All right, now let's talk about infrared heaters. All right, now all these other ones work by heating up the air and pushing the air around that kind of stuff. Infrared is different. What it does is it heats up the objects in front of you. It like bypasses the air and heat and directly will heat up the object. This is the kind of thing you've seen like at a restaurant or something you walk by and, and uh, you know, in the outdoor seating and they have the heaters up in the rafters there and it just shines heat down on you. Basically works like the sun does, all right? So you're looking at $70. This is down from 110 on this thing. This is the kind of thing you could hang from the, your shop stuff here. They actually have little options. There's the roll cage so nobody bumps into it and hurts themselves. There's your ceiling mount. You can mount a few of those around the shop and really put out some heat. There's your tripod so you can move it around and get the heat where you want. Heater only $70. All right. That it is a great system, but again, it has to be shining at something. Here's one thing you can do, though. It can act like a mass heater. If you've got something that will retain heat that it can shine at, then that thing will radiate the heat out afterwards. That's something to take into consideration. Now, then we've got the quartz-style infrared heaters. And what these do is they're the same thing, but they're in a quartz glass, and they're kind of a combination of the infrared heater and the forced air heater because they have forced air blowing over the quartz, putting air out into the environment. So it's kind of a best of both worlds. They're, they're great little box. Most of these things are on wheels. I like them because I can kick them around the shop to where I need them. That's what I like about this one. It ain't pretty. It's a nice little cube. I've had one that runs for years. At this point, though, it's loud as all snot and needs to get replaced because it's just it sounds like a, a box of rocks rolling around. But it still works, and it still puts out the heat, and it's been doing it for 15 years. Uh, and uh, anyway, this one's 88 bucks. On top of that, you're going to get 10% off coupon. It's going to take this to sub-80. You got digital readout on it. You got... Uh, the remote on it, it's the, other than the oil field, it's the most cost effective as far as how much juice you're using to put out that, that heat. You got all little buttons and stuff up there. It's got nice little handles 
and you know you can move it around easily and again most of these have wheels this one doesn't look like it has wheels it's got tip over protection they all do they got timers on them i don't know if i'm i'm not the sort to use a timer on something like this maybe you are but let's move along to this one this is the doctor infrared heat basically the same thing in a prettier wood box i like the look of it i like wood uh it's 122 dollars down from 130 it's got the wheels on it uh, so you can kick this thing around to wherever you need it. It's got a remote. Put that up on the workbench. You know, you can use this thing, you know, anywhere in your shop. You could use it inside. looks good. $122, that's because you're getting that kind of build construction with the wood and everything else. All right. Now, they've got this one, and I just want to include it because it was interesting. Lasco. It's basically the same thing. It's just in a more industrial kind of box design. It's $120. Bucks. It's less expensive than this one, more expensive than this one. I don't see a specific reason I would want to go over that other than the fact that it's the Lasco name on it. Lasco does make good products, all right? There's just no two ways about it. It's got the remote, a uh, nice little industrial looking little box. You could stick it in a corner somewhere and just pump out the heat all day long. All right, this is the heat storm, all right? <laughs> Smart Wi-Fi infrared wireless wall heater, all right? So you mount this on the wall. It's the exact same thing as the other things I was talking about. Instead, though, instead of a box, you kick around, you put wherever. This is something you mount on the wall. It connects to your Wi-Fi. You can use an app to control it. That's pretty nice. You're going to, you know, if you can get that then to connect somehow via, you know, she who shall not be named, you can say, hey, you know, Allegra, let's, you know, why don't you heat up my shop for me? And before you go out there, by the time you get out there, you, you know, it's, it's taking that, that bite out of the air. $95 there. That's not a bad option there. I, I, you know, I've talked about getting one of these for years. Maybe in my next shop, I said, maybe we'll, do, we'll go that route. I don't know. All right. And this one we got to talk about. This is, this one was just fun. And yeah, you know, Red in his last shop, uh, it was really breezy. So I know this is the one he kept near his editing desk and stuff. Uh, and you know what? And I got to agree with him. It, it just has that nice look and feel. Yeah, a real wood, wood burning fireplace would be nice. And yeah, it's kind of cheesy. But you know what? When you set it off to the side, it just provides that nice little glow. Because I'll be honest, the top of this, everything from the legs up is a lie. All right. This down here, that's the heating element. That's that's what's doing the job. This part is a lie. It just looks good. It's nice. You can sit a drink up here or some other, you know, put your phone, put a phone charger. This doesn't get hot or anything like that. And I and I, I got to admit, it, I'm a sucker for that that warm fireplace kind of look. You know, judge me all you want. But for 50 bucks, I don't know. Would you rather have something like that or would you rather have, you know, some, you know, some boring box like where to go? Uh, the, uh, like this. They're, they're doing the same job. You know, one just has a better aesthetic, I guess. Isn't that what the kids call it this, these days? And last but not least, we got the true, like, fireplace console kind of thing. Yeah, it's designed to go in, in your uh, in your living room. You put your TV on it or whatnot. But you know what? You could put this in the shop. You could put a bunch of stuff up there. Heck, you could you could put a, 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 a bench drill press on there and a grinder and whatever you want. Not sure that's the best use of it, but just put it out there as an option. Anyway, just remember, folks, I want you all to stay safe. If you do decide to go with the propane, make sure you take the uh, go to the propane safe option. If you got a good option when it comes to these milk house heaters that isn't a piece of junk, let me know because I like the style too. You can throw them in. You know, they used to be really well made, and these days the metal on them, the gauge is just really thin. It's like an aluminum can. It's kind of a joke. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to chomp the old like button, smash that subscribe, ring the, way, the bell on the way out. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.